Hello guys, welcome to the channel. In this particular video, I will explain the problem find kth element of spiral matrix. So the problem is really interesting and asked by companies like Amazon. So let me start with the problem statement. It says that you are given a matrix with n rows and m columns. Your task is to find the kth element which is obtained while traversing the matrix spirally. All you need to do is you need to complete the function find k which takes four arguments the first argument is matrix a and the next two argument will be n and m denoting the size of matrix a then the fourth argument will be integer k right and the function will return the kth element which is obtained while traversing the matrix spirally right so according to the problem we are given a function uh, find k this function takes four arguments a n m and k right so these two are for size this is for the kth element that i have to return and this is for the matrix right and i have to complete this function inside this function we have to return the kth element for the spiral traversal now let me explain the problem with the given example so we are given a 4 by 4 matrix and our task is to return the 10th element of the spiral traversal of the matrix right so first of all let me talk in brief about what exactly is spiral traversal we start from first element then we move like a spiral this is how we move right and the direction will be this one i hope you are able to understand this thing so once you have understood this so let me write the elements of the spiral traversal i have four i have one then two then three then four after this eight twelve sixteen then i have 15 14 13 followed by 9 5 6 7 11 and 10 right so these are the elements that i have and my task is to return the 10th element right so if i start counting from here then 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 so this is the element that i have to return right 13 is the output but my question is if i have stored it somewhere then what is the index where this element will be stored if i start from 0 because 0 based indexing is followed by every data structure right so this will be at index 9 so i have to return the element at 9th index right now i hope you have understood the problem statement so let, let's talk about the solution now and the first approach that will come to your mind is quite similar to this one so in the approach there are two steps the first one is write the element in of uh, like spiral order traversal and once you have written that then you need to return the element at k minus 1 index right so this is how we can solve the problem now you can see that i have written the spiral order traversal of the matrix as well so the element at 9th index will be uh, this 13 because according to the problem we have to find the 10th element right now the problem with this approach is we are using some extra space in order to store the spiral order traversal right but we can avoid using this we can avoid using this which is going to optimize the space complexity so let's see how i have the value of k as 10 right i have to find the 10th element so what i'll do is i'll start traversing the matrix spirally then whenever i reaches uh, i reach one element then i reduce then i'll reduce the value of k by one right I hope this makes sense to you so let me start with the first position uh, let me change the color to let's say blue so I'll start with this position I have reached the value 1 right I will uh, reduce the value to 9 after this I'll move to 2 then I'll again reduce the value after this I'll move to uh, 3 again reduce the value then 4 again reduce the value then 8 again reduce the value uh, then 12 right again reduce the value then 16 again reduce the value then 15 again reduce the value then 14 again reduce the value then 13 and again reduce the, uh, reduce the value which is going to give me 0 right so this way you can see that now i have reached the value of k is 0 which means that i have traversed 10 element till now so once i have traversed 10 element then there is no need to traverse further because i have got my answer right so 13 is going to be the answer this way so now you can see that by following this approach we are able to uh, reduce the space complexity to o of 1 right because we are not using any extra space now so this is the approach that we can follow uh, to solve the problem now once you have understood this particular approach so we can avoid this step and even we can avoid storing the values here right so we can just uh, traverse the matrix spirally and we can get our answer now the only question is how to get the spiral order traversal of the matrix right once you have got this particular way then this problem will be a cupcake to solve 
I hope uh, you have understood this particular thing. So now let's talk about the spiral order traversal of the matrix. I have written the same example here and now the approach that we need to follow is quite similar to what I have explained to you. I'll start with this row, right? So I have to print the first row first. Uh, how to print the first row? For uh, like i equals to 0 to i uh, is smaller than n, right? This is going to give me the first row. And what I have to print? I have to print a of uh, which is 0 row and i, right? This is for the first row. Similarly, in order to print this particular part, let's say I have to print this part, right? So how to print this part? I'll start from 1 to uh, like, okay, I have to write M here. The reason is I have M columns, right? Uh, I just got confused between rows and columns. I have M columns and N rows. So I'll traverse till M columns, 0 to M, right? And after this, I have to start from 1 to N. So I'll start from 4, I equals to 1 to i is smaller than n right once i have got this loop then i can simply print the last column which is nothing but a of i then uh, this is m minus 1 similarly i can print these three values as well i'll start from again 1 and then i'll move till 0 so 4 i equals to uh, like m minus 2 to 0 right and once I have written this loop, then all I need to do is I need to print the last row. So in order to print the last row, I'll print every element of the last row, which is n minus 1 and i, right? This is how I can get the last row. Once I have printed this, then I need to print this particular element. So I'll start from 4, i equals to uh, like n minus 2, right? i is equal to n minus 2 to 1. I'll not go to 0 because I have already printed the 0th element and after the inside this I can simply print a of uh, okay this is the first row right so I have to print every element of the first row so I'll write i then 0 once you have understood these four steps then we have to perform the same step for the inner matrix as well right you can see here that once I have uh, okay so let me change the color first once I have printed these four uh, lines then all I need to do is I need to print, uh, I need to run the similar task for this particular matrix as well, right? Because this is again a matrix of smaller size. So I have to write the this particular code or I have to modify this particular code in such a way that it becomes dependent on some index value, right? Because once I have the index value, let's say this is a uh, column start, this is column end. So I can simply reduce the column start and column end in order to print the first row of this particular matrix as well, right? Like we are printing uh, for this matrix. So similarly, we can get the row start, row start and row end as well, row end as well. Once you have understood this, then all you need to do is convert this particular code to a form which is totally dependent on these particular uh, like parameters, right? So how we can do this? Let's see. Now I have the same matrix, right? And I'm going to write the code with it, which is dependent on four parameters, which is column start here and column end here. Then again, I have row end and I have the row start, right? Row start. So what I'll do is in order to print every column of the first row, I have to run a loop, right? Uh, so I'll run a loop. I'll run a loop, which is going to start from four okay uh let me change the color let me change the color first in order to change the color uh, i'll simply select the color blue okay after this i'll start a loop for the first part i'll start for the loop uh from column start to column end right column end once i have written this loop then inside this loop i need to print every particular element of the first row so i'll print print a of uh, uh, okay so I have to print every particular column right so I'll write row start then I'll write I this is going to print the every column of the first row okay once I have pr uh, printed the first row then my task for first row is done right I can increase the row index so I'll do row start plus plus now this is going to increase the first row now my first row is pointing to this particular row right so I can start a loop from the first row to the last row and I have to print this particular uh, three values, right? So I'll again start a loop for i equals to row start 
to row end, right? Row end. Inside this loop, I have to print the last column. How to print the last column? I'll simply write print a of. Uh, in order to print the last column, I have to print every row of last column, which is this is going to print every row, and last column is basically column end, right? And once I have printed the last column, then I can reduce the value of column end. Column end because and now I want my column end to point to this particular uh, column, right? Because I want to get this particular matrix at last. Once I have printed the four lines, so now my column end is pointing to this particular column. So I can start from I can start a loop from this point to this point, right? Because I have to after this I have to get these three values: 15, 14, 13. So once I have done column end minus minus, then I'll again start a loop for i equals to column end. And after this to uh, my column start, right? Column start. Inside this loop, I'm going to print the last row. In order to print the last row, what I'll do is I'll write print. Uh, okay, I'll write print A of. I have to get the last row, right? How to get the last row? Every column of last row basically means uh, row end and then I. And once I have printed the last row, then I can reduce the last row. So I'll do simply a uh, row end minus minus, right? Now my row end is pointing to this row. And I have to start from this row in order to print 9 and 5, right? So I'll start a loop again, a loop for i is equal to row end, row end to row start, row start. Right, and my row start is pointing to this, and row end is pointing to this. So I have to print nine five. So I'll simply print print uh, a of okay. What I have to print? I simply have to print every row of the la, uh, first column. So I'll do something like this. Once I printed the first column as well, so I'll do column start plus plus. I hope this makes sense to you. And this is what I have I have to do. And now you can see that I'm able to print the first four lines, right? And my code is totally dependent uh, on these particular parameters like row index and column index. So once I have reduced this value, now my row index and column index are pointing to the smaller matrix. And I have to do the same task for the smaller matrix. Till when I will do the task while my index are valid. So I'll write while my row start, row start is smaller than equal to row end, right? Row end. And my, uh, uh, okay, column start is smaller than equal to column end. This is what I have to do. Once you have written this particular code, then your task is done, right? This is all you need to do. And talking about the time complexity, so the time complexity is going to be O of n cross m, right? Because m is traversing not more than n cross m elements of the matrix. So this is about printing the spiral order traversal, but our problem was to get the kth element, right? And in order to get the kth element, you can see what approach we were following. So we were simply reducing the value of k and we're checking whether the value of k is become a zero or not right so let me show you in the code how we can modify this particular code to get the answer so here is the code that we have right and you can see that i have written the same spiral order traversal the only difference is i'm reducing the value of k each time once i have got any value right and if the value of k becomes zero then i'll return the current value that i'm pointing to similarly i'm writing the same thing in every particular loop right and this is how we are able to get the solution for the problem similarly you can see uh, the c plus plus code here as well the c plus plus and java code is exactly the same the only difference is uh, the name of the variable right you can see that matrix name is changed here in the parameter Similarly, this is a Python code. There is only the change of syntax because Python follows a totally different syntax than C++ and Java, right? So this is the code that we have. I hope you have understood the problem statement and the explanation of the solution. This is all about this video. Thank you guys.